So at the start of the year, I pretty much decided that I was going to need a calendar to keep track of everything that I was doing with uni, with library, with YouTube, and all of that sort of stuff. And the one that I decided to settle on was called CalCurse, which is an NCurses based terminal calculator. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So as always, the first thing we're going to do is get the program installed. So I've already got it installed, but I believe on most distros it'll be available in your standard repo. So on Arch you can get it with sudo pacman calcurse. On Ubuntu you can probably get it with apt-get or you can probably get it as a snap, I'm not really sure. It's a really popular program though, so I'm going to assume that it's available in most standard repos. Now, let's actually run the program and see what it looks like. So, this is what it looks like when you first load it up. So it'll prompt you if you have data files already in it. So I'll just press enter and that'll load them all up. So yours might look a little bit different to this because I've changed out the, I think I've changed the layout. I've also changed the color scheme. I might not have changed the layout. This might be the default layout. Anyway, the first thing that I'm focused on is my appointments window. So this is the window that I treat as most important. So this will have all of the things I have to do each day. So today, all I had to do was upload the podcast to the library and I've already done that. So I'm not too worried about that. But then if we go to the next day, I've got like some other stuff like my library exclusive vlog, the podcast to YouTube, the soundcheck to library, and also a class that I have that day, which might be cancelled, might not be cancelled, doesn't really matter right now. So there are other tabs in here as well. So if I press tab, that'll take me to the to do tab. Now I've got a couple of to do's in here. If I want to look at one of them, I can press V or I can press enter. So if you press V, that'll just say play around with D menu patches. Then we've also got this one for working on my systems requirements document and my team charter, all of that's just assignment stuff, not too important. So you can press V or you can press enter. So if I press enter, it does the same thing. Now, if you want to add a to-do in here, all you can do is just press A. And as we can see, that brings up a prompt down the bottom. So let's say this is a to-do. And then we can also set the priority of it. So if you set it to zero, then it will have no priority. If you set it to one, that's the highest. So by default, your to-do list is ordered by priority highest to lowest and then nine is obviously lower. So let's just set this to nine. So as we can see in here, this is a to-do with priority nine, and it says this is to-do. So we can also add notes to this. So if we press N on this to-do, then that'll bring up a Vim buffer or a buffer for whatever editor you have. So if we just start typing in here, now I've got this set up so I can use markdown syntax in here. Now you have to do this yourself. I'll show you that in just a moment in my Vim configs. But by default, it's not going to do markdown highlighting in here. So this is a note. Okay. So if I save that, so if we press enter on it, we don't see the note. To view the note, we have to press greater than. So this will bring up the note in whatever your pager is. So by default, that's probably going to be something like less, but you could use anything you want for that. So that's, that's pretty nice. So let's go over to the next tab. This is just the calendar tab. So in the calendar tab, you could just move around with Vim keys and this will move around your appointments window as well, which is really nice. So let's say we wanted to go to a couple months from now. So there we go. As we can see, this now shows it's August 5th in here on the appointments window and also on the calendar window. So they're synced together, which is really nice. If you want to go back to the current day, then you can just press control and then G and that'll take you back to the current day. So you might have noticed that I was switching between different commands down the bottom here. So to do that, all you have to do is press O. So on here, right here, it will show you other command and that'll just cycle through the list of commands. So that's really nice to see what the program can actually do. Just wanted to get that out of the way just so you guys can see what I'm actually doing there. Now, some of these little windows in here actually have alternate views. So if we press control N, that'll actually change it. Now this, I believe is like an appointment view. I don't really like the look of this, but if you want to see roughly when your appointments are during the day, then you can do that. Now let's see what the other ones have. I don't actually know what the other views are. So does that have an alternate view? No, that one doesn't. And that one doesn't. So the alternate view is just on the calendar. Obviously you can move around the days with your Vim keys or with arrow keys, but there are different ways to move around as well. So if you press T, that'll take you to the next day. If you press capital T, that'll take you to the previous day. This will work on the calendar, the appointments, and I believe also on to do. So this is just a global key. If you press a W, that'll take you to the next week. If you press capital W, that'll take you to the previous week. If you press M, next month, capital M, previous month. If you press Y, next year, capital Y, previous year. And you also have the option of jumping directly to a date. So if you press G, now the default setting for this date format is different. I think by default it's year, year, month, month, day, day, or something like that. I've got it as day, day, month, month, 
year year because that's just a sensible way to do dates. I know someone's going to hate me for that date format. I don't really care. That's just the way I do dates in Australia. So let's just jump to the day I was born, for example. So 9th of April 1998. And that jumps us to that date. Now, if we were to press G and we just press enter, that'll jump us back to today. And like with Vim, you can also jump to the start of the line and the end of the line with zero and dollar sign. So if we press zero, that'll take us to the start of the week. If we press dollar, that'll take us to the end of the week. So that's actually a nice little thing as well. One thing that's nice about the calendar view is you can actually add appointments and also add to do's without going to the other views. So if we press Control A, that brings us the option to add an appointment. If we press Control T, that'll give us the option to add a to do. But on the appointment view, you can also add an appointment by just pressing A. When you do that, it gives you a prompt to add the time for the start of the event. So this is, I think, by default in 24 hour time. At least I haven't changed it from 24 hour time. I believe you can change it to AM and PM. I'll show you that in just a moment. But for now, let's look at this. So if we do, let's say 1800, or we could leave it with no time and that'll be an all day event. So we'll just put it as 1800 though. And then you can have the end time for the event. So if we press question mark, this will show us all the formats. So you can do something like plus hour hours. So that'll mean take the start time hour and then plus an hour on it. Or you could say plus a minute or plus 10 minutes or anything like that. Or you can just set a specific time. So I'm just going to set a specific time as 2000. So that's 8 p.m. And then we can add a description for it. So let's just say this is an appointment. And there we go. As we see now, we have an appointment at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you can also add notes to these as well. So if we press N, that'll bring up the same buffer we saw before. And now we can start typing stuff in here. And we still have our markdown highlighting like I showed before. Once again, I'll show you that in just a moment. I forgot about that just before, but I'll show you that now. But before that, if you press greater than, that'll bring up the notes in a buffer that we saw before. Now I'll bring up my Vim configs. This line right here will fix the problem. Now you also have the option of doing things besides Markdown. So I do Markdown just because that's how I like to format documents. But if you change this to say, I don't know, Groff, for example, then you can do Groff formatting. I think that's the file type for Groff files, or you could do HTML or various other ways to format documents. I just like doing Markdown because it's really easy to write and that's just how I like writing documents. But you have the option of doing whatever you want. So I'll leave this in the description down below so you don't have to copy it from the screen. But yeah, that's that's basically how you fix that. Now let's have a look at how to actually configure this program. So if I press capital C, that will actually change the commands that are down the bottom here. So I'll move the webcam up to the top. Yeah, that's probably fine. So we've got a few options in here. So we've got general, layout, sidebar, color, notify, and keys. If we bring up general, this will bring up a list of all the general options. If you don't want to do this though, I will show you where the config file is also stored. So if we go into LF, into the .calcurse folder, there is a file in here called conf. And this is basically the exact same file that's here. Now, I like doing it in here because it'll actually give you some help to actually set the values. But if you want to do it from the file, that is also an option for you. There's a bunch of stuff you can do in here. Like you can you can show multiple appointments in the appointment panel. You can hide completed stuff. You can change the calendar view. If you press E, that'll start cycling through the different values that are there. So I've got it by default on monthly. But you can do a bunch of stuff in here. There's a bunch of other stuff you can have like... You can disable auto saves if you want to. If you do disable auto saves, you can press S to manually save. I would recommend leaving the auto save on because it's just easier in case you ever forget to do it. And yeah, as I was saying, there's a bunch of other stuff like you can confirm quit or you can confirm delete. You can have the first day of the week be Sunday or Monday. You guys can pretty much check this stuff out. Oh, here's the one for date formats. So I've got mine set to day, day, month, month, year, 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 but Default is month, month, day, day, year, year, year. So that's the American layer. I, I don't particularly like that though. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the other ones. So if we press L, this will bring up the layout. So I am actually using the default layout, but there's a bunch of other ones like having the calendar and the to-do on the left side and the appointments on the right side, or the to-do on the left side and the calendar and the appointments on the right side. You guys can see what that is. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you prefer one of these other layouts, feel free to check those out. I'm... Quite a fan of the default one though. We also have the option of configuring the sidebar, but if I press this, it doesn't do anything. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be doing. I've 
pressing help doesn't do anything. I actually don't know what that one's supposed to be configuring. Anyway, the one you might care about though is color. Now color isn't as configurable as I would like it to be. I would have liked to be able to change like the color for this and the color for these and you can't really do that. All you can change is a foreground and a background color. Now that's one of the things that really bothers me about this. So I've got my foreground color set as cyan. So as we can see, we've got cyan on a bunch of this stuff here. And then my default background color is just my terminal's default, which is white, because that just makes it a bit easier to read the text. I don't really want to change my default text color. But as I was saying, I would have liked a bit more configuration here, but I guess it's fine. That's, that's probably one of my few problems with this. You can also configure notifications. Now, if you're gonna do notifications, you're probably gonna wanna enable this right here. So enable the daemon, so it'll keep running once you close CalCurse, because otherwise you're not gonna get notifications once the application's closed, which would require you to have it always open and it's just a bit annoying. So if you do wanna have notifications, then enable this option right here. The last thing you can configure is the keys. Now, I like the default key bindings, but if you want to configure any of the keys in the application, they're pretty much all configurable. It's, it's pretty straightforward how you do it, so I'm not going to really step into that. One last thing I should probably mention is that you can actually import from another calendar file. So if we press I, this will actually give us the option of putting a file in that we want to import from. Now, I'm going to assume that whatever calendar you're using is using a sensible calendar format. I don't know what Google Calendar uses. I'm guessing it's probably something sensible, but knowing Google, they... I've probably just made up some of the calendar format. But if you're using like Thunderbird or anything like that, you might have a better chance of actually importing your calendar. You also have the option if you want to stop using CalCurse, if you press X, this will actually let you export your calendar as well. So that's also an option. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but if we bring up the man page for CalCurse, a lot of the stuff you can actually just do straight from the command line. So for example, if we go to import, you can do this directly from the command line without actually opening up the app. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well, like you can do export, you can grep all of your appointments, you can filter appointments, you can select appointments between dates and things like that. I'm not going to go into that. What I wanted to do today was just go into the regular calendar side. I might come back at some point and look at some of this filtering stuff that we can do. But for now, I just wanted to look at it as a calendar app and hopefully you guys will try it out and and maybe it'll be a useful calendar for you guys as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. That'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below. So that'll be my Patreon and various other methods like that. So if you want to support the channel, then that is an option for you. But as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, and I'm out.